In this lesson, I'm going to show how to quickly set up the joints and constraints for what we refer to as a reverse foot roll system for a character. Um, so what I have here is a typical joint layout for a leg. So I have the uh, hip, uh, the knee, ankle, ball of foot, and toe. And I'm going to set up an IK system from the hip to the ankle. So I'll go up here to the skeleton menu and choose create IK handle. And I'll click on the hip and then I'll click on the ankle. So that now gives me the IK target here to move the, the leg around via the child object, which is the ankle. So now I'm going to set up the joints for the reverse foot roll system. So again, if we think about this, we want to be able to rotate or have our character rotate from the heel, the ball, and the toe. So the reverse foot roll will get us that. And we call it the reverse foot roll because we're going to make it in reverse coming back up the leg. So again, I'll go back to my skeleton tool and do create joints. And let me zoom in on the foot area here. So I'm going to place the first joint right about where the heel would be, which might be right in there. Then I'm going in the reverse direction. So I'm going to come this way to the toe. Then I'm going to come back to the ball of the foot. And then I'm going to come up here to the ankle. Now the trick with this system is not getting confused with these, these various joints. So what I like to do is just change the size of the reverse foot roll joints so that I don't confuse them with the real joints that I need to parent to them. So I'm going to hit enter to apply that and we can see the shape of the reverse foot roll. And now I'm going to change the size of these joints. Um, I'm going to do that on each individual joint. Uh, now I'm not adhering to best practices here in my outline or I'm not naming the joints uh, but for this quick demo that should be okay so I'll take joint 7 which is the parent joint here and in the attribute editor I will change its joint size its radius actually I could do this in the channel box might be easier right there's the radius value so I'll make that a little bit larger let's see what am, where am I going to let's try uh, a value of one I'll just type that in and then I'll do that for all of these joints in the reverse foot roll system so I will set that one to one I'm just working my way through the chain now and one whoops what happened to that one? Oh, I made a radius point one <laughs> not one that's probably why it got really small and then finally the last one would be here that's the the one that's um oops i'm sorry i'm going in the wrong direction i uh, joined 10. so basically i went seven eight nine and ten see this is why naming is so important because you start to get confused all right so again i'm over here changing the radius so now that this is the reverse foot roll system and i can see it much better from the underlying joints which are the smaller ones so now my next step here is to parent the proper joints to each other and we just follow the system. So the, the toe joint, that's the original toe, toe joint of the leg, that's going to be parent constrained to the toe joint here on the reverse foot roll. Now with constraints we always select the parent first, so I'll select the reverse foot roll joint, corresponding joint, and then I'll shift select the toe of the actual leg joint system and then I'll come up here to the constraint menu and apply a parent constraint I'm going to open up the options to make sure that maintain offset is active otherwise these might snap in a weird way actually what I should do thinking about snapping here is I should make sure these are all perfectly lined up so before I actually apply the constraint let me just close that to cancel it I want to make sure these are all snapped into place. So what I'm going to do is take the, the toe with my move tool. And what I like to do is just 
actually I'm also gonna hit insert so I'm only affecting this joint and none of the ones below it in the chain. Insert is like going into pivot mode. So what I like to do is just move the joint away like that, then hold down the V, V is in victor or victory <laughs> on the keyboard and now I'm in snap mode. So now I can snap that joint uh, let me go here, snap that joint right into place. And I'll do that for each of these. So I'll select this joint, move it out of the way, hold down the V key and snap it. Let's get it to snap right back in place. And I'll do that one last time up here, move the joint away and then snap it in. I move it away so that I can see the snap happening. If they're really close, you're not, you know, you don't, you're not quite sure whether you've snapped it. So now I can hit insert to go out of pivot mode and now I can apply my constraints. So again, I'm gonna select the parent. I hit Q on the keyboard just so I didn't have the move tool in my way. And then I'll hold down the shift key and select the child. And then I will apply the parent constraint with maintain offset. So I hit apply. So I applied a constraint there. Now I'll come down to this one and this is the reverse foot roll joint and then the corresponding actual ball joint of the leg and apply the parent constraint. And then the tricky one is up here on the ankle. We don't go joint to joint here. What we actually wanna do is take the reverse foot rolls ankle and we want to constrain the IK handle to it. So I'm gonna select the IK handle, not the joint. Because remember, that since we applied an IK system, the IK handle is controlling that joint. So if that's controlling the joint, then we need to you know, go up one level and basically take the IK handle and tell it to follow the reverse foot rolls ankle joint. And then I'll hit uh, apply again. So now if I test this, it should, it should keep these underlying leg joints in place. So if I use my move tool, we see that they are now locked in place, which is great. If I rotate from the toe, the system follows. If I rotate from the ball, the system follows. So that's the basics of setting up the reverse foot roll system. Um, the next, I'm, I'm gonna do a second video here, so these aren't too long, where we look at using or creating a custom attribute over here that would show up over here, a custom attribute that will allow the, the character to either rotate off the heel, the ball, or the toe. And we'll do that using set-driven keys. So I'm gonna do that in a, uh, let's call it a part two lesson here.